My name is Emerick Martin. I have been involved in language teaching and learning since 1994, particularly around refugees and migrants living in Ireland and elsewhere. I also am very involved in computational linguistics and speech technology more than anything else, which is essentially, you know, um, dialogue tech, talking to machines, speech synthesis and recognition. And listen here is a project we started myself and a couple of friends essentially started about two years ago in September 2020 to put online more than anything audio and video resources for migrants living in Ireland who needed to learn the language and the know-how of Irish society in order to integrate. Now, so founded September 2020, we've around 300 users. Now these are not all regular users. We're not that great. Uh, we've about 30 lessons up at the moment and the website is listenhere.ie. So the challenges to any learner of language all come down to one thing. Language is not a skill. It's a combination of at least five skills. And so if you look at the, the, the infamous spiky profile on the right there, you'll see that both of those learners learner A and B would come out with a sort of a level of five. But in fact, their, their, their individual skills are completely distinct. So online learning or any sort of, what used to be a language lab essentially can be really, really helpful in getting learners time and space to practice their individual skills. Because within a classroom environment, the teacher has to, more or less teach to the common denominator. And there will be somebody who needs to listen to something four or five times, whereas there'll be somebody else who catches it in one. So the teacher will probably go two times maximum. Teaching and more than anything, practicing speaking and listening and pronunciation in a classroom setting is incredibly time consuming. So this is amplified when you're talking about a migrant who probably doesn't have access to a lot of classes, if they have access to classes at all, who may be working or have caregiving needs so that they can't get to a bricks and mortar class. And the other thing is that despite the efforts of various agencies to put a sort of a, a timeline on language learning so that they can move learners up year by year into higher and higher levels, language learning takes a lot of time. I mean, your average native speaker seven-year-old has had full-time 24-7 tuition from everybody around them to get the le level they have. So if you're looking at an adult, it's, it's kind of irresponsible more than anything to expect that there will be a competent level of language within say a year at two to three hours a week of classes. So this was all true long before the pandemic. The pandemic has exacerbated it because access to classes went, online classes went, and the, 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 the usual problem of digital literacy and availability of devices is even more acute with migrants who generally have low or no income and maybe sharing one computer, if they have one, or tablet among a family. Um, so the third problem is the content of existing language learning material. They tend to be in US, UK, or Australia, New Zealand accents, the large populations of English speakers. The topics tend to be very, very vanilla or irrelevant. They're non-controversial. For example, you have booking a hotel room, which is probably not what a migrant needs. What a migrant probably needs is how do I talk to the social welfare office? How do I how do I manage a parent-teacher meeting? How do I understand what my child is learning at school? How do I write a CV? So this is often, we often hear now, because of the internet, there is plenty of material out there for any serious language learner. But the problem is that language learning is not just input. It's not just hearing and immersing yourself in the language. You need to engage with the language in activities which bring you close to the language in order to learn how it works. So what we did was I am also involved in a startup with a language learning agent called Nilla. Now, Mila is basically a virtual tutor. It's built around a spoken dialogue system rather than a slide-based learning sort of paradigm. 
Whatever we do, we, we do lessons for various learner groups, but we always base them on relevant video, audio or text so that the learning becomes context integrated. It's based on well-researched teaching methods. Um, language learning and teaching has been around for a long time and there are activities that are known to work. Um, the idea is that learners will eventually produce accurate language as well as just improving their understanding. So the exercises are not really listening exercises. They're a kind of listening and syntax and accuracy by stealth. Mill is completely multi-platform, mobile PC or tablet, and therefore it's adaptable to different learner groups. So remote blended in class. Now, what's happened with this in here is that we're using Mila for free, but we're creating lessons about life in Ireland. In order to get the material, we're kind of crowdsourcing it from Ireland in that we invite people to give us a minute of speech around any topic they like. It could be video, audio, we get TikToks, we get Zoom interviews, and we hope to build up a sort of a, a, a bank of material about everything and anything to do with Ireland. So I'm just gonna put this on in the background so you can see some of the topics we cover. Um, so access, obviously it's, it's online, so it's 24 seven, there's unlimited access, and we can use it with independent learners in class homework. So it's also a virtual language lab. So it fills all of the sort of the nice things you want with any sort of good language teaching and learning in that it's context and language integrated, content and language integrated, there's, there's autonomous learning, there's task-based learnings, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm just gonna give you a quick demo of how it works. Let's just get this. So the first thing is it's a virtual tutor. So I'm just, hopefully you can hear this. Hi, I'm Ella. I'm a multimodal, interactive, language learning agent. I use text, speech, audio and video to help you learn. I can message you throughout our lessons. I can also help you improve your speaking. I can teach many languages. Par exemple, je parle très bien français. And we do have the Hi, I'm Ella. So the first thing you can hear there is that the synthesizer is Irish accented. It's not American or British. Those are synthesizers, and synthesis has gotten good enough to do quite a bit at this stage. It's still not good enough for very long, as you might have found it. I mean, I was very interested in Trevor's talk about read aloud. When you, depending on what you read aloud, it can sound more or less natural. And if they're nice short sentences, which is what you want for learners, it can be quite natural. So we use the synthesis as the mediator or the tutor of the activities and the materials, whenever possible, any material we use is human speech rather than machine speech. So as you can see, there's a whole world of content that we've put on there. Everything from the Kupla Fuckle of Irish through local history, Michaela's plans for the weekend, which is really good sort of, one of our teachers, this is her neighbor who talks about, you know, taking the kids to school, going shopping, eating, et cetera, et cetera, which is exactly what learners need. Next one. What is going on? Oh, wait, sorry. Never ever play videos during a presentation. Okay, so there are exercises for each of these pieces of video. For example, this one was Luke O'Neill. And I'll just move forward. To listen carefully. So we talked to him on Zoom. He gave us a nice little talk about how to work with COVID. And then after the video, which has been shortened there, we go Using into these three things, social distancing, stay apart, wash your hands and wear a mask. We can beat this virus. If we all just keep that in mind the whole time, we will eventually beat this. Now answer the questions. So you have your gist questions, true, false, and then you'll move into other exercises. For example, this one is just a jumbled text. I'm gonna tell you a bit about COVID-19. And et cetera, et cetera. So as I said, all available on laptop, desktop, mobile, or- now In English, tablet. you may know that there are five vowels, the A, E, I, O, and U. But with these five vowels, we get over 20 different sounds. So you can have the sound k 
and t, and in between you can make words like cat, Kate. So we spent a bit of time, you know, <laughs> learning video making skills, but the, the main point is that there is a large range of different Irish accents, there's a large range of material, and there are pretty sound activities to go with it. And it's all, the, the initial listen here was all based about adult learners living in the country, in Ireland. We then started to try and move on a little bit. Are you ready? Ah, go away. Watch and listen carefully. Because the system can also talk to you and have a conversation, which we don't use all the time in this context, because what you don't want is a voice system that fails, because you want to keep up your learning confidence, but just to show that it does work. Carefully. Oh, that's so sorry, we're still on Luke O'Neill. How does he? <laughs> Everywhere. This one. I'm Lilla, and I am here to help you improve your English. What's your name? My name is Emer. Nice to meet you, Emer. To get started, I'll ask you a few questions. Where are you from? I'm from the west of Ireland. Really? Do you like it there? Um, it's okay, it rains a lot. I'm based in Dublin myself. Let's talk about your English. When did you start learning? Oh, quite a long time ago, I think, Mila. Okay, now I need to hear you speak. And so on and so forth. So our plan is to build more of the interactive chats about, obviously you can apply this to, let's say you have a job interview, let's do it online beforehand. Let's say you're going to the bank, let's have an encounter. Well, if you can find a branch with people in it nowadays, let's find, let's find a way of having your, your interaction at the bank. We're, we're currently looking for funding with some Swedish friends of ours to put this in the context of um, augmented reality, where same, something like Pokemon Go, where when you pass a post office or a bank, you can log into a lesson there and then. So you get this just in time sort of a thing. Okay, so I'm Lilla ah. and I'm here to help you. <laughs> Why, okay, so we've recently, at the end of last year, we really got into, we discovered that the English, now, the department is now calling it EAL, which is English as an additional language to reflect the fact that most refugees, it's not a second language, it could be a third or fourth language. Um, we did a pilot with NCI's Early Learning Initiative where we got in contact with teachers in DESH schools uh, who have a lot of EAL learners. And the idea was to take the teacher's content and notes and to build lessons around core vocabulary for various subjects, which the learners can then, or the students can then access on their devices. And we actually did the pilot on leaving cert economics of all things, because the particular school were all of the students who were not taking Irish were doing economics in one classroom. And the idea is that, you know, because a teacher knows that, okay, in two weeks time, we'll probably be on chapter six, we can prepare a lesson for two weeks previously so that the EAL learners will be going in with the core vocabulary learned. So they're not as lost in the mainstream classroom. So we're trying to um, expand this this year. So we'd be really interested in talking to any teachers and extend it to other subjects, obviously than economics, which is a kind of an odd one and to junior cert. Um, that's just an example. We try to make it a little bit more um, teen centers in that, you know, you know, these are various classes of goods and economics using Air Jordans and Drake and various things. Um, so to finish off, and I hope I haven't taken, oh yeah, 14 minutes, not too bad. Um, we're desperately, well not desperately, we're looking for volunteers because we have a huge bank of material ready to be converted into lessons. And we'd also love anybody to contact us who'd be willing to give us a minute of their speech about anything. I mean, if you wanted to talk about your garden shed or how to make a cup of tea or whatever, you're more than welcome. And that's all I have to say. Thanks very much.